So what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Chronicles of Mr. Fish with me, Mr. Fish. Today the outlook is upon an NC750 by Honda. This is a manual version, not the DCT version. And the only reason I have this bike is my CB500X is in for a service, so this is their courtesy bike. So I thought I'd uh, bring it to your attention. I can uh, tell you something straight off the bat. This is an easy bike to ride. Uh, I tried to pull over it a minute and uh, have a little look around the bike because I don't know much about these things. So here we have the NC750S. As I say, I don't know much about this bike. I know it's a parallel twin. 17-inch uh, wheels, front and rear. I don't know what the tyre sizes are. That's a 160-60-17. So I'd assume this is a 120. Uh, can't really see because the mudguard's in the way, but I'd assume that's a 120. 750cc. 14 litre tank, not sure of the seat height. I shall find out the specs and put it on the screen. And the reason I've got this is this is the loan bike. My CB500 is in the shop for its 8,000 mile service, so they've uh, gave me this as a courtesy bike. I've only been riding it for a little while, but it's a nice little bike, it's better than I expected. I think because I wasn't expecting anything. I'm uh, quite pleasantly surprised. I understand that this is some kind of storage compartment, but how you open it, I have no idea. Is there a key slot somewhere? Right, so this is the fuel. <laughs> oh no, it's not. Ah, so that's the storage compartment so there, it's quite big that's a good idea that, I like that and so that's that so the fuel goes in there I like that that stays up the only problem with that is if you've got a tail pack but not too much of a problem. This is a bike I didn't think I would like. I've never really looked at them. Can't really say <laughs> a lot about it because I don't know. Well, let's have a little look at the dash. Right. Let's start it up. Go through all the colours. So you got trip A. Oh no, this is the on-board computer. You got your average, they got it on miles per litre. Uh, some literage, I don't know whether that's total litres used, it looks like it. And your miles per litre as you're going along. Time. I don't know whether it's a timer or something, because there's a clock there, so I don't know what that time is. Uh, and total mileage, or today, oh it's the date today, it's wrong, but it's got a date on there, and total mileage is 1,461, it's got ABS as standard, it's got a gear indicator as well, and it's got this rev counter here, that changes colour, but, whatever. Right, let's get on. Before sitting on this bike and taking it out, I would never have put this on my list of bikes that I like, but it's really comfortable. I'd be interested to ride the higher version, the adventure style now with this engine. Although I quite like this. It's a little bit different from what I'm used to. I like high bikes, but the ergonomics of it are not too bad. It's got a nice power curve to it. It's really easy. I mean, I'm in fourth gear now, 29 miles an hour, 2,000 revs. And it doesn't feel like it's chugging away. Clutch is nice and light. 
dashboard's very clear. Lots of information. Once I know what it all does. I would like the bars slightly wider, but that's a personal thing. That's not the bike's fault. That's because I've got wide shoulders and probably because I'm used to the CB500, which has wider bars. But this is very Honda. And I mean that in the sense that you jump on it and you ride it. There's no faffing about getting used to it. It just seems to instantly just do what you expect it to do. Seat is a little bit hard, but not excruciatingly painful. And I've got a little bit of wiggle room. The wind blast is okay. I mean, you get a little bit of protection up to mid chest from the fly screen. I wasn't expecting to like this. But I am. And it matches my crash helmet. I know most people buy a crash helmet to match their bike. But I could actually buy a bike to match my crash helmet. <laughs> That'd be weird. I didn't expect it to uh, hit the rev limiter so soon then. That was in second gear. It doesn't rev high at all. Now it topped out really quickly on the revs then, without any warning. It didn't scream, it just seemed to get to the limit, which was a bit strange. I'm not used to that. You can usually hear the engine spinning up a lot quicker before you hit any kind of rev limiter. But I suppose in the sense that keeps your fuel costs down <laughs> because the engine's never stressed and that's probably why they can get good mileage out of this tank because I believe it's 14 litres because they've got the storage in there that takes up a lot of the tank space because the tank is I think it's mid mounted somewhere but they claim quite a good distance on that 14 litre tank. I think they claim 80 miles to the gallon there or thereabouts which is good mileage for a 750. So again, the fun side. Will that hamper the fun? Mm, yeah, I can see why they say it's not fun because you have to short shift it. You have to change up really quickly and if you are someone that likes to go out and have a play at the weekend I can see that becoming a bit of a drag but for everyday use it really does seem like a good understressed comfortable bike now I'm starting to sound like a journalist and I was gonna put it in that great beginner commuter bike and I can see why they're putting that in this category or putting this in that category but I don't know, I still have fun on it. I suppose the good thing about it not revving out so high is it keeps your license in check. You don't get the urge to go banzai on it. You're never gonna sort of like get to the stage where you think, do you know what, I'm gonna go out and go absolutely ballistic on it. So this bike could also be a uh, license saver and I'm kind of digging that I just said digging fuck me I'm just transporting myself back to the 70s I'm digging that man <laughs> what the fuck I mean if you short shift it's fine it's just not a racer the engine is uh, good but a bit lacking in character that's the only downside it lacks in character but is that a bad thing I mean is character another word for not good <laughs> I don't know it's getting confusing this look it up bike larky I mean I didn't even want to look at this this wasn't even on the radar I've heard or I read as you do that this is a good beginner bike this is boring it's dull it's a commuter 
and yes it's all of those but it also depends on your personality and what you want from a bike I can have fun on nearly every bike I've ever had I've managed to have fun 125s, 50cc, 1200s I have fun they're just different ways of having fun this is not going to be the level of having fun where you shit your pants every 10 minutes if that's what you call fun I guess I'm getting on a bit now I'm getting a bit more sensible in my old age I've done the shitting of my pants riding experiences I'm not going to go on track days with this so that part of it is irrelevant it's got a nice storage compartment in the tank and being in the UK I'm always carrying something around with me even if it's only just a set of uh, waterproof trousers and some extra stuff but I can keep my phone, my wallet and all my other gear in the hole in the tank so it saves me getting luggage for the back because as I said I'm in the UK so it rains quite a lot and I like my stuff to stay dry so that is a little stroke of genius that it just doesn't light your fire in the sense of uh, excitement but is it a bad bike no doesn't make it a bad bike it makes it a bloody good bike to be honest because there's nothing wrong with having a bike that does everything it's supposed to do it never claims to be a race bike it never claims to be a stunt meister super naked it just claims to be useful and yeah it's useful I am starting to question my mentality <laughs> I start getting into what is essentially described as either a beginner or an old man bike well I'm definitely not a beginner so I guess I'm starting to fall into that old man category but if this is the worst you get for being an old man bring on the grey handles okay you can have fun I would say put an aftermarket exhaust on it because uh, it gives you a little bit more idea of what the engine's doing because it is very quiet and very very stable I can't believe I'm liking this bike and what I'm realizing is I don't need sexy I need comfortable <laughs> oh my god is this how a midlife crisis starts does everything boil down to I need comfort I feel like I should go home there and just put some slippers on <laughs> and a cardigan oh my god I can't believe it <laughs> right sadly this is the end of my time with the NC 750S and this is because my bike is now ready from service so I've got to take this back but I have to say I quite like this bike as I said previously I shouldn't but I do I'm beginning to realize that riding a motorcycle is more important to me than looking at a motorcycle if that sounds weird it's all the bikes I've looked at it's because I like the look of them and when I've sat on them or ridden them I've been very very disappointed whereas this was not even on the radar because I looked at it and I thought Ugh, it's okay it's nothing special it's got a hole in the tank a boot which is weird all the journalists slate it say it's dull boring just a practical piece of kit but I guess I am in the market for a dull practical piece of kit because this is more useful to me than say an R1 not that I was looking at R1s they're too cramped and too sporty for me my sporty days are long gone they're way in the past 
I'm now more interested on how long can I stay on a bike and ride it, therefore where can I go to? I want to go places, I don't want to just show off, I want to just get on the bike, use it every day, go out and about doing my business and have a little bit of fun in the meantime. And this is living up to that, which I never thought it would. So. In conclusion, I really, really like this bike. Didn't think I would, but I do. It's comfortable, it's fuel efficient, it handles okay. The only downside for this model is it's slightly too small for me, being six foot two. But it's not as bad as a lot of other bikes I've ridden. It instills you with confidence, it's easy to ride. It's very practical because of that massive hole in the tank. So I don't have to get full luggage for it. I can make do without a back box, which is a big plus. I like the dash, it's clear, it's informative. The only downside to this bike, and it is a massive downside, is me. It is making me realize the sort of biker I have now become and that's a sensible one a clever one one that now uses my brain and on that note I suppose I should bid you farewell so stay safe love you all until next time fish out